Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and people of the Custard Persuasion. So, my name is Dodok Saber Frenzies, and welcome back to the, or rather, welcome to the endless mode of Copy Kitty. So, like I said, last episode we finished doing Boki's normal story. So now let's do Boki's endless mode. So, I will be perfectly frank here, I very much doubt that I'll get to the end of a second round of normal endless within one video. I just don't think it's something that's going to happen. But, you know what, let's get as far as we can and uh, see how this all pans out. So, the way this basically works is you've got... Well, you'll be extremely surprised by this. You've got an endless supply of enemies. And uh, every five waves, then you face off against a boss. But then for waves nine and ten of each, uh, of each variety, then you get a mid-boss followed by the sort of like the main boss of the mode. For what? Of the mode? Of the environment. For want of a better phrase. You'll see what I mean shortly. So now, just uh, just because I can, you know, we're going to clearly get the best weapon in the game and just, you know, ruin everything. Die, die, die. There you go. Flare, Incensi, Delta. This is the thing that I mentioned before, where if you, uh, if you get it, then... Uh, and it uses the weapons that the uh, that the fortress verse has. Then you're a bit screwed. <laughs> so let's uh, let's summon another dragon. Let's see how long this boss lasts. And the answer is slightly too long, if I'm being truthful. <laughs> it really should have done more damage than that. Oh uh, well. You know what? I want to keep as many dragons as possible because dragons are amazing. Unless, of course, I find plasma in here somewhere, in which case I'm swapping out the force for the plasma. Because, seriously, like, for a tornado, explode, and plasma gives you vacuum blast. And it's amazingly terrain destroying. It is absolutely fantastic. There we go, so we've got a homing tornado made of explosions. And it is fantastic. Like, honest to god, fantastic. Okay, so we're at wave 9, so now we've got the second mini-boss. Which we shall, um, you know, kill with dragons. <clears throat> I mean, hopefully, dragon, singular, but, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <clears throat> die, die. I'll... No, I've lost my power kick. No, my power has been broken. Damn it! I missed the wave. Shit. Oh well. I was hoping to get some phase rockets before the jumbo XGK. But luckily, in endless mode, if you're um, <clears throat> well, essentially, if you're running out of weapons, then you uh, then it will drop targets down from the ceiling to give you more, which is a very, very nice kind of anti-frustration sort of device. <clears throat> I find myself greatly appreciating this. Uh, now the thing is, is when it comes to the endless mode, it's a lot more about reflexes than it is about planning and coordination. So be prepared for screaming and mild panicking and me having zero idea of what's going on. Oh, there we go. Ooh, I even got myself a little health pot. Excellent. Right, so ideally I'd want more split than anything else, because split is extremely useful. Like anything that covers a huge AoE when you're playing endless mode is exceptionally useful. So now, in case you're, you're blind or you're just uh, just listening to this whilst you're out and about, so we're now in the factory. So this is uh, world world number two. And this, this is, yeah, this is where we're getting stage hazards again. It's very, very similar to the factory world in the, uh, <laughs> in the, uh, in the campaign, or the story, or whatever you want to call it. 
because you know this it's at the end of it this is meant to be a much more challenging that mode than the story because with the story you know it's somewhat well, not predictable but kind of predictable you can plan your way around it you don't get that benefit here so you will have this randomly spawning terrain and enemies which I will guarantee will spawn directly inside of you whether you want them to or not which is frustrating as all hell um, screw, screw it I will use invincibility frames to get that plasma I really want that plasma and now specifically next I want to explode because if I can get that then I have vacuum blast and oops Mind the crushers. There we go. <laughs> that is my problem slightly solved. Oh, you <laughs> die, you absolute nonsense. <laughs> you see, just appeared and landed on my head. It's the exact opposite of what I wanted here. That's right, so now I've got the leafy deltas. So luckily, because I have plasma, I can pierce his shields, which is mind-bogglingly... Oh, explode. Yes. Yes. First off, I want even more plasma. Thank you kindly. Vacuum blast. Terrain? Did you just mention the forbidden word? We don't have terrain here. Honestly. What kind of place do you think this is? Is this a, a, something that exists on Earth? No. <laughs> and everything dies. Oh, and a, a, a little, a little, um, eh, not intricacy, that's the wrong word for it. It's a nice, uh, a nice little thing that you can not strictly exploit, but you can, you can take advantage of. Is that, uh, if you are playing through this mode and you uh, you, know, you complete a wave and you've got full health you know, whether or not you started with full health at the, at the beginning of the wave is irrelevant, it's whether you've got full health at the end then it'll actually give you ammo for whatever weapon you have queued up as your main one and by main one I of course mean the one in the centre that you can use your the regular shots for <clears throat> which is extremely, extremely useful. I mean, I'm not going to be able to take advantage of it this time because, you know, I'm a, a bit special, you see, and I can't shoot properly anymore. You know what? It's correct. Just have more vacuums. Do I... Yep. Oop. Gone. Right. Die. Okay. And this is where I promptly remember to not act like an idiot. There we go. Let's dodge the projectiles. So. Now wave 20. Ooh, I was hoping to nick off with the plasma before he spawned. Oh well. Um. <laughs> okay, yep, that's fine. Please feel free to shoot uh, what, mortars at me. I've got all those bloody gears. No, 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 no. Okay. So that's one of them dead. Hey. Excellent, that killed that somehow. No, I keep forgetting, that's electrified. I can't run out of that. Actually, it's something that I don't know if I've mentioned in my earlier videos, but I feel I really should do at this stage. Um, 
know, considering how often and for how long I keep raving about the plasma weapons and them, sorry, not the plasma weapons, the uh, the tornado weapons and them being the best ones in the game. That is true. <clears throat> because... Oh, you see, you get little cutscenes between some of the environments, which is quite nice. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but there is a mechanic uh, where if you're using the same combo shot, okay, it has to specifically oh vacuum blast, based vacuum blast. But if you're using the same combo shot for I think it's because I remember the dev posted something about it at one stage, but I can't remember the exact wording. It's something along the lines of if the weapon in question features a certain amount of time in the 50 most recent enemy kills, then it reduces the power of that weapon. Now, even if you just change it by, say, like if I somehow manage to get Vacuum Blast onto, uh, onto that list, then even just by using Calamity Pillar, yeah, Explode and Tornado minus the Plasma, then that'll that'll reset it. Like the the smaller one will still be perfectly fine. It's just that specific combo. But likewise, in theory, you could potentially uh, end up getting the kind of the weapon staleness. I think it gets called <clears throat> just on a on a two shot weapon. But you'd have to be pretty unlucky to end up killing that many enemies without picking up a different weapon, which occasionally has unfortunately happened. Usually when I'm playing Forest, as it happens. And I'm not honestly sure why. There we go, give me more ammo. Give me a mini boss. Ah, oh, nice, I got some more explode out of that. Because like I mentioned in the Yolo Machu fight, is, um, for some of them, then, yeah, like, you can destroy the enemies that make up the the boss, and you can steal the weapons that, that they would ordinarily spawn, which is exceptionally useful, but you just don't get the chance to abuse it very often. On the topic of abuse, this teleporting bloody ninja rabbit on the spring with his bloody... It's not shurikens, is it, if they're straight? Is it kunai? I think they're called. But whatever, it's very annoying. <laughs> it's like one of my least favourite types of mini-boss. It's very frustrating to deal with. Okay, so now we're on to the second half. The thing is, is when you're playing the, uh, the different environments, then sometimes they will change from one section to the other. Like, you know, now I've got the rain mechanics going on. So my explosions do less power. But then if I had a lightning or a uh, or a wave-based weapon, then those would be buffed. Like lightning in terms of uh, more AoE and more damage. And then the wave ones because it multiplies the number of particles. Ooh. Um, I kind of want that, actually. Give me Gatling rockets. It's much more fun to play with. I don't really like bounce when I'm messing around with either water or low gravity. Because it just tends to make it more frustrating than it needs to be. I mean, luckily, when it's in the rain, then the bounce shots don't just, like, suddenly lose touch with the rest of reality and start flying around everywhere. Which would be funny if it did happen, but it'd be super annoying. But no, like, whereas in uh, in low gravity, then they just float upwards regardless of whether they're in water or not, which can be useful in some somewhat limited circumstances. Ah, there we go. We've got the Desibon again. Do you know how when I was uh, playing around with the the furs from before in uh, World 10? Yeah, so there's, there's the boss version of it. Not particularly scary. I mean... It's the boss of round two, you know, I'd, I'd have to be rather terrible at the game, given the amount of hours I've put into this, 
I'd have to be rather terrible to be scared by the Decibon at this stage. He says as he drops directly onto... Will you just get... You know, this is the point where I would really appreciate some explode. Thank you. There we go. I was going to say this is where I'd really appreciate one of those weapon drop downs. Which I would be extremely grateful for, but sadly it's not to be. Yes, I think we know what's coming up, don't we? The resurrecting of the uh, legless helicopter rabbit? I don't know, how would you even describe that? I mean, apart from possibly a helicopter rabbit that's legless. Although it does somewhat beg the question of how on earth does that helicopter rotor function, because it's meant to be on the top to provide the downdraft. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm thinking about this too hard. Oh, hang on, I saw something with Tornado here. Yes, dragons. <laughs> I'm happy, that's all I needed. Oh, and another nice little anti-frustration mechanic. <clears throat> I never knew that was a cutscene. <laughs> Ah, oh, oh, that makes me happy. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, oh, what on earth was I saying? Oh, yeah. But another uh, anti-frustration mechanic, which I very much am in favour of, is um, when you finish off a boss, then... Come on, give me the ammo. Thank you. So when you finish off a boss, and you move to a new environment, then all the weapon and uh, health pickups and ammo pickups and like boost drives and stuff it all appears effectively on top of your position when you spawn on the new world so you don't have to sort of frantically sprint around hoping that the one weapon that you're after is gonna suddenly despawn like nah you've got a bit of leeway there which is very very appreciated go, a bit more vacuum blast. You see, it's the sky environment which I really love having vacuum blast on. <laughs> because it just demolishes everything. And um, with you, uh, you know, well mind you, I suppose Calamity Pillar, Maelstrom Vortex, uh, what the hell's the other one? Uh, Atomic Flare, you know, those do the same thing, but not to quite the same extent, because, you know, a tornado made of exploding lasers is substantially more destructive than anything else I have in my inventory. Uh, no, you can't destroy the one that's being fused. Dark, dark. Come on. And I run away. Yes. Ah, it's Needle Storm. Ooh, on the topic of Maelstrom Vortex, there we go. Yeah, the Maelstrom Vortex is absolutely fantastic. The only occasional problem I have with it is that, uh, <clears throat> well, it, with it being a split based weapon, then it's only majorly effective if it's got stuff to split up from. So it needs to have that uh, you know, it needs to have that terrain or those enemies to bounce off otherwise it kind of loses its effectiveness. Which as I'm sure you will appreciate is kind of annoying. There we go. Give me that. Implosion strike. <laughs> and then run away a little bit. Explosion strike. And then miss. And then not run away a bit because I hit. And deaded it. Yeah, get myself a bit more plasma. Oh, there we go. We got the wind. You see, this is where I really. God damn it. This is where I really want to have the uh, the tornado power again. Just so I can really demonstrate the uh, the effectiveness of the wind as opposed to before. Um, 
Did I actually get for that ammo pickup? I don't recall seeing the icon. Uh, I haven't the faint. Ooh, tornadoes. <laughs> oh, yep, there you go. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. Um, to dragon or not to dragon? That is the question. <laughs> No, 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 I can't. Mind you, I don't think I've do actually done Summon Dragon with the uh, with the Tornado modifier on. Yeah, I don't think it made an appreciable difference. I think it might have been excluded from the buff list. Which I can kind of understand, <laughs> truthfully. Because if you made Summon Dragon any more overpowered, then holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, because Plasma makes it go from the bottom, doesn't it? Amongst other things. Well, it kind of makes me wish I had Remote at this stage. Now, normally I'm not a huge fan of Remote, but blending Remote with Tornado, and then the, the following effects could actually be really, really cool. Like, uh, Firebird is one of, one of my favourites out of that, uh, that, that family, for want of a better phrase. There we go. Ask and ye shall receive. Yeah, so I, I... Oh, yeah, of course, because I'm in the rain now, so I get the double effect. But it's not windy and rainy. But this isn't the Cindermero Wastes, so I don't get the truly OP combos. Oh, yeah, and there, there's another another interesting point for you. So when it's windy... Yeah, see, I'm only throwing one now. But when it's windy and rainy, then... Like, like I said, I mean... Realistically, Helix Twister is always going to be my. F Good God, I forgot about these. It's always going to be my favourite of that uh, that kind of category, because it buffs absolutely everything when you're in the Cindermera Wastes. And also, you can aim the tornado projectiles, provided that they're being used alongside the um, the, 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 the tornado. Yeah, tornado and remote. You can actually aim it. Which makes for some rather cool manoeuvring sometimes. Especially if you manage to get something that's not, you know, like Leviathan, where it kind of ends up stacking up on itself. And then floating off into the surface, never to be seen again. Boom! There we go. Not quite a perfect nailing, but it is close enough. It's more than close. There we go. The cave. Yeah, the the cave is not my strong point, to be truthful. The cave environment is the one that I like the least. Ooh! ooh, ooh, ooh. God damn it. Explode. Firebird. It's very cool. <clears throat> but of course, you know, it's strength. Yeah, if I actually had more of them. Its strength is in the fact that you can layer it down. So you can, in effect, just have loads and loads of them at any one time. So what starts out as, let's be truthful, a fairly powerful ability on its own. Can I? Nope, I can't stand on that unimaginably tiny sliver of ground. Yeah, but what starts out as a fairly powerful weapon on its own can suddenly just be multiplied because you can lay down five or six of them in a target area. And if you're skilled or lucky enough to be able to get your opponents into the area you want them to, I don't like gears go away, then honestly, you just, you're just onto a winning streak. Like you can lay that down underneath a huge boss, like the boss of the ocean, for example, the, um, I keep trying to call it, is it Dave? I think it's called Dave. Nah, we'll see it soon enough. But if you can layer it down under one of those, go away. Then you know, just trigger them all off at once, and then suddenly you've got this 
truly ridiculous force that you can just unleash at any time. And they have nothing they can do about it. Because if the enemy is, you know, stupid or predictable enough for you to be able to layer down that quantity, then it'll die. Instantly. It's... Oh god, it's this one. Ah, god. Yeah, there's the screen wraps around, which is both a blessing and a curse. Because occasionally, if you can manage to, like, do the thing where you can... Yeah, reflect every single cog back in on itself because you've caught it at the perfect time. That is one hell of a cool scenario. You just don't get it very often. Ah, there we go, shields. Ooh, you get back here. Thank you. I might keep the tidal blade for as long as I can. Or maybe sub it out for a prism blade. Which is uh, if you get plasma. If I can, that'd be lovely. Though maybe, now that I come to think about it, I remember what the boss is for this one, so maybe grabbing force later on could be useful for the deflector blade. Because the deflector blade does exactly what it says on the tin, you know, it deflects things. Oop, hang on, wait, when did I get Buzzsaw Roll? Not that I'm complaining, but when? Yeah, shit, hang on. Oh yeah, the Vorpal Blade. Okay, this is actually a really unique weapon. In that you can actually... You can still use it while running around, which is... You literally, you can't do that with any other weapon. The Vorpal Blade is the only one. It's very, very cool. Very useful. Oh, God. Oh, no, you're going to be one of those. Oh, fucking hell. Yep, it's going to be one of these. Because now, there we go. Yep, there's a lot of teleporting everywhere. <laughs> and I've killed it. Excellent. All right, never mind. Uh, panic over, guys. <laughs> uh, excellent. Well, I'm very happy with that. Oh. Right, okay. Yep, giant circular saw that spews projectiles when you're in an enclosed space. Oh, and by the way, it's now making tohu patterns. See if I can get some. Uh... Oh, God. You know what? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Get out of range. <laughs> Accidental Goomba Stomp. There we go. Yeah, just gotta get that one kitty army in there. Gotta get that sorted. Oh, there we go. We got the desert. I do, I do like this sub environment. I mean, oh yeah, prism blades, shiny, shiny, shiny. But yeah, so the gimmick with this one is it's windy, so all the tornadoes are boosted, which is oh, exactly what I want. Come on, give me, give me, give me. So, you know, it's just... <laughs> Did somebody order a takeaway of death? So, yeah, so that's kind of... Actually, hang on, let me... Um, so, about quick, get something that's actually a bit more... Um, a bit more tornado-shaped. Um, no, no, that's not doing what I wanted to do. It's very peculiar. Oh, well, I'll have to wait until I get something that's not bound. So I may be waiting a while. Anyway, what on earth was I saying? But yeah, the, so the gimmick with this one 
is it's uh, it's sunny, so explosions are all boosted. And it's uh, it's windy, so if you get hit by anything, you go flying for miles. Holy shit! That's uh, that's basically it. That's that is the main main thing that's going on here. So it's giving me a lot of ammunition for some reason. Like just raw ammo, like no weapons, just ammo. It's very worrying. Oh, excellent! So we get to deal with a. Rainbow digitized on fire helicopter sheep <laughs> because you know the original versions were, were, were just just weren't enough on their own but luckily I know the secret to combating you that is to effectively stay right underneath you and then kick away where did you come from oh yes uh, remote. Alright, not what I was expecting, but that'll do. Ooh. Okay, I will take that. Ooh, crystal sheen. I do like the crystal sheen. Crystal sheen is pretty cool. Because it sticks to people. And has plasma projectiles. <laughs> And I have never been so grateful for the enemy to all stay in one spot under there before. <laughs> oh yeah, and of course another gimmick. Yeah, we got this uh, this quicksand that we uh, that we kind of ran into a little bit back in World Eleven. I say back in that was literally the most recent video, but you know where I'm coming from. Actually, yeah, let's get the Matrix burst. <laughs> A smacks a. Do you quite mind? Oh, all right, fine. Looks like I don't get to play with the fun toys. Ah, well. Oh, never mind. I get the fun toys again. I get the crystal ladders. Uh, do I? Let's get the triad reflector. Let's keep it varied. Let's keep it interesting. Unless, of course, I get Vacuum Blast again. In which case, fuck you all, I'm keeping Vacuum Blast. <laughs> it's just my default for everything. If I have it, I'm keeping it. But then again. Has, oh, oh, accidental. Accidental laser sword. That's unfortunate. Like I said before, my problems can always be solved by the application of a tornado that's made of exploding lasers. Again, okay, some decent damage in there. Then slash to bits, and then accidentally use all the plasma. Ah, oh, well, it's to be expected, I suppose. Um, nope, that's just ammo. Uh, useful, but not really what I wanted. Oh. Excellent. Although I would have very much appreciated having that weapon pick up. Okay. Yep. So we've got the dynamite throwing monstrosity from the uh, <clears throat> from the underground world. So beating this with a blade is going to be a barrel of laughs. Well, mind you, you never know. It might actually be a barrel of laughs. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that is fantastic. Shurikens. Oh, where are you spawning this time? Not where I wanted you to be, but that'll do. Oh, no, 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 no,